Hi everyone. Now, I recently tied this fly here. Now, this is uh, a loch style, a loch colour combination, uh, basically the, the bibio. Now, the bibio is a great pattern. It's got very good in fishing a lot of the lochs. Uh, small fisheries as well as the larger lochs for wild brown trout and rainbows. And the hook choice is basically, uh, to suit that type of hook would be, this is, and I like to use a, a medium wire hook because it says a dry fly, uh, dry subsurface type type fly. Uh, I like to use the short shank special, um, but when I'm in the river, uh, I prefer to use a lighter wire hook like this, and especially represent like this type of fly. It just sits higher, it, it bobs really well, and basically this is what we call, well we call these type of flies that like they never sink. Uh, dry fly patterns and this one's the granum. Now the granum is the, the green tail with some people recognise the name. Uh, it's a, an early season caddis and it comes off. I mean you can even get it this this month further down south where I am. It's late in this year. Um, so you're looking probably early March. It starts to really hatch in some parts of the UK, especially obviously south. And as you come further north, like up where I am, you're looking more towards the end of April. It's a great fly, it's a great pattern. And uh, as I say, this is basically tied in a similar style to this one. Using, the in this case I'm using the new, well it's more than a year or so old now. now the Ultra Dry Wing, I, I mean I've used it for about a season and a half. Uh, really, really good. Uh, floats extremely well. I mean obviously... It's a synthetic fibre with a natural fibre there to give that nice better look. Uh, but it, it takes, once you use whatever floating you like, you prefer, the fly floats. I mean, it basically, to say it never sinks, uh, if you pull it hard enough and pull it below the surface, it will sink. But it will come back, it it's dries and it's straight back out there. It's a great fibre. And I really liked it, I was really surprised how well it floated. But it suits this style of fly really well and easy to tie. So I'm going to quickly tie this just to show. Now I'm tying this on a size 16, it's an ultimate dry. I'll just show you the hook. Now, wait to find my glasses. There we are, need them. The old, these are the, the reading glasses. Uh, just makes it easier to obviously see as you get older. Just reading glasses there, plus twos, which is normally what I would use. Um, thread I'm going to be using is the grey thread, uh, Uni 80. They say the hook I'm using is this one. This is uh, basically the full mill. It's called the Ultimate Dry and Black Nickel. Now I'm just going to come in a wee bit, just leave it too far away. This will be a bit better. The first thing I like to do is just run the wax through my thread to get that grip. Now there's lots of ways to represent uh, the tail or the egg sac, that's what the green is for. And I'm just using, I mean, uh, this is a an antron. This here is a nice green inset of green, suits the egg sac. Uh, I don't have the ultra dry yarn in this colour uh, or I'd use it. But anyway, come down, maybe Five mil or so, just catch it in. I usually pull it into the tips, and then I work my way down. It's easier to tie it on the way down. Yeah, just stop, just before, just as it starts to ground the bend. I usually take a turn underneath, turn on top. The egg sac. I mean, it's just a small tail. Just trim that. Now, what I've got here is now. I like a bit of UV times in my dubbing. Uh, this is a blend that I've used. It's actually some of the uh, the dry fly dubbing from Full and Mill mixed with a wee bit of. I mean, red squirrel is a is a good one. A uh, bit of rabbit, a bit of hare's mask. You can mess around with it. I only need a wee touch. Now it floats extremely well. This once you put in a sort of dry fly dub. Always I like to blend my dubbins. Uh, just. Thing I've always done. They just this is just the tide of the back up here. 
Now for the wing I'm going to be using uh, the ultra dry yarn, what do you see there? This is a tan. I know it's in, it's, it suits, I like the, the tan colour in this fly. You can use the grey, or the grey dun, or even the dark grey if you want. Uh, but I like the tan. So I've taken a length, a length out. It's quite, it's basically quite simple. You just tie it like you would do if you were doing a, like a small hedgehog type pattern. I usually tie it towards, in this case I'm going to tie it towards the end of the tail. Which is there, just catch it on. Get three or four turns. Let's take away the excess of lens there. And then I go back to my dubbin, tiny bit of dubbin. Just tidy that area up. See what it's like. And then some, still, some of the dubbin's still there, so I'm going to pull this back, fold it back, and then put some dubbin in front. And then trim, just slightly, not much the same length, but just slightly shorter, so, there. And then, I'm just going to tiny a bit more dubbing here. It's fine, and do the same again. So, back to the same. Let's tie it on. Three or four turns. Get my dubbin again. It's a very simple and quick way to tie these flies. And dubbin. Oops, I'm just going to pull it back, tie in front. Now, what I'm going to do here now is put some Velcro through. I'm going to bring out the dubbin into the the wing. Just draw it back. See what it's like. Turn it up. Just need to check the body. I usually just sort of trim away any excess. That's fine. Just looking at the length. Looks a bit rough at the moment, but that's fine. Now I'm going to put horns on it. Now they can make, when you put them on it, it can be a wee bit fiddly. So I'm using this as a medium pardo from Whiten. Now there's only two horns, but I because these are fine fibres, I, I like to basically put on more than one. Oops, I pulled it off. I'm just lining up the ends here. I've slipped through my fingers. It's I've lost a couple, but so length just tie it forward. I usually take my thread down to about, say a head length away. To be honest with you, I just usually, the waist ends, I usually just leave them. To be honest with you, I just trim them back to a sort of length. They disappear, but they're not pull out. Put a wee bit of dubbing. And then I'm going to put some deer hair in. Yeah, I'm just going to velcro it back just to get it to sit. I'm just using some, this is just a bit of elk. And I'm not going to stack it, I'm just going to tie it straight on. Just bring it out. Tie it like an elk hair caddis. Just going to remove the under for a wee bit. So I want the tips towards the end. So we basically catch this on the top. Two or three turns. See what it's like. You want to tidy up that area, just like we did with the the yarn. Just put a wee tiny bit of dubbing there, and then best way to do it is to bring your thread through towards the eye. If you lift this up, you'll see that the horns will spring away because these are much stiffer, and they they'll tend to keep out the way. So just lift up. And then you want to end up with your thread in front. I usually just put it in front of the horns. And when you whip finish just at this point, it's much easier to whip finish at this point. The, the, with, don't trim it because you it's much easier to lift these out the way when they're long. Uh, 
and we trim this the same way we'd do an elk hair cardus. Just watch the horns there, this is really a bit fiddly. I usually try and come in from the side and trim. And then I'm just going to open out my horns a wee bit. You will tie them in a wee touch. You can curl them a wee bit if you want to make them look a wee bit neater or a wee bit natural looking. And then I just lightly trim this fibre. And there we are. Pulls together in the end. It was, it's a bit rough looking. All I'm doing here is just using the Velcro as like a brush. There you go, that's a granum. They never sink granum, if you want to call it that. Uh, Long fibres here. Now, a lot of people who <laughs> say, what to say never sink, it's a style. These are patterns we would call never sink, just, uh, just because of the style they're made. Uh, originally, I would probably use, uh, what's they call it? Um, Arrow wing was was good, but sometimes it's a wee bit straight. But we're having this the 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 ultra dry yarn is very curly like it's got a lot of light. The blend of the the natural and that together works. And the, I use muslin, I just rub it into the wing. So I do basically do it before I put it in my box, so it's much easier. And it will last. Once you cast this, it just floats forever. It just keeps floating. A couple of false casts and it's back out and it's sitting there like a cork. It's a great material and it's a great, it's a, it's a good style. Even if you don't have the, the this yarn, just give it a go. Poly Pro, uh, what's the other one? Parapost, try it. So there's other companies you can try, but the, the, this yarn, I, I do like it. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. And again, thanks for watching.